This is a BM21 Grad, something you would think is quite inferior to some of the more modern rocket artillery systems of the world. Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, and thank you for being here today. We are talking about rocket artillery, which uh, is something that I need to talk more about for sure on my channel, because it fascinates me. I am a field gunner myself, I do love standardised uh, field artillery, or the towed howitzers that we currently use here in Canada and other countries. But we're here today to look at rocket artillery and its effectiveness. Now the footage you're looking at right now is of a Ukrainian checkpoint being bombarded with BM-21 Grad missiles. Uh, as you can see, people running away. This must have been an absolutely terrifying experience uh, to have that much firepower be brought down upon uh, an objective like that in any one moment. And it's interesting because recently a lot of people have been telling me about how you know rocket artillery isn't as as accurate as it could be in the older platforms like the Grad uh, and some of the sort of you know Soviet Union, Soviet bloc style older missile platforms that are out there of today compared to the more technically advanced weapon systems like the GMLRS or you know guided multiple launch rocket systems like the HIMARS or the M270 and uh, the British Army of course using the GMLRS weapon system as well so a lot of nations using sophisticated rocket systems to be very accurate with large payloads but the Grad it, it doesn't work like that <laughs> it works on the basis of a lot of missiles at any one time being fired in a huge salvo to put as much firepower downrange as possible, not extremely accurately, but overwhelming, I guess, a basis of weight of fire. You know, the number of rockets actually landing in a beaten zone is insane. Uh, in this footage, you can see that the area that's been covered is almost, I would say, a good eight to 900 meters solid, maybe even a kilometer square. And that is probably from just maybe one or two grad rocket launches. That system has done what, you know a battery of six field guns would take not only just to set up but to actually put that many rounds down range a good half an hour's worth of firing um because that's a lot of rounds i mean there's at least i would say at least 80 rockets that are landing in that area maybe a little less maybe about 60 rockets uh so maybe more than you know one or two grads but you put a battery of six grads on the battlefield and, and they're able to fire conventionally, i.e. they don't need GPS, they don't need radar, they don't need anything to correct their fire missions. It's just hopefully aim and spot. And you can see in this fire mission, it's it's kind of showing the grad's age in terms of its accuracy because they obviously didn't hit, I'm sure, the objective they were looking for, which was actually the checkpoint. But just look at the weight of fire that, that put down range. I mean, each one of those blasts, the kill radius is probably at least... 50 meters from the center portion and i'd say injury probably another 50 meters from that uh multiply that by the number of rockets in the surface area that it's covered that's insane uh and is a game changer when it comes to artillery firepower now of course reloading a grad is, is quite an arduous process you need to put new rockets in there it's not as simple as putting a fresh cartridge in on say a field gun but uh you know it's really not that technically difficult to put those rockets in those tubes you pull the fuse tab off the bottom you lock it in place and and you're just about ready to go again the great thing with the grad too being a wheel platform is you lower the tubes you drive off probably to a logistics point or a, a resupply location put your tubes back on drive off to another location and fire again and we're talking about salvos of upwards of 24 rockets at a time maybe more depending on the configuration of the rockets stacks firing in one salvo or potentially different multitudes of salvos that can do that much damage and this checkpoint if this fire mission was actually on target this checkpoint would have been obliterated uh you can see that precision of the rockets isn't tight grouped it's a very widespread 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 uh aerial denial weapon if, if anything you know it's it's producing not the lethality of you know accurate weight of fire it's more sort of denying ground you know when you put a number of rockets in an area like that you're preventing a battle group from moving forward right i'm not going to send you know an armored battle group through that area or an infantry battalion through that area if grads have just launched there and you're going to want to be digging in pretty quick if that stuff's coming down um and then just the surface area that it covers you know and that that's probably just a couple of launches could have even just been one to do that and the projectiles aren't exactly huge you know they haven't got a huge amount of explosives in there but you can adjust the kind the kind of projectiles going in there too you can you go know, flechette darts that can bomb burst almost like you know basically huge buckshot from the sky of darts um or you can change it to other things like you know 
bomblets. You can change them to cluster munitions. Uh, that's more sophisticated, I think, as stepping away from the BM-21 Grad. Uh, there's a lot of more heavy-duty Russian artillery weapon platforms out there to launch their rocket munitions like that. But in the grand scheme of things, when I'm looking at the footage, it is quite... In it's impressive, and it's also terrifying <laughs> uh, that that weight of fire can be produced at any one time just from a couple of trucks with some rocket packs on the back, uh, compared to you know me on my on my howitzer uh, putting rounds down range from up to 11 kilometers away, and and the setup time and it takes, and and you know yes I could keep going all day long putting round after round after round, but I've still got to resupply and get those rounds, uh, so there's no real huge difference between getting the grad with its own rocket tubes um, and the mobility of the field gun is obviously a challenge so you know a lot of people have been saying to me you know newer rocket systems are so cool i'm telling you the older rocket systems are still doing very well for their time uh there is no doubt about that and for people to say that the grad is an inferior rocket platform for firing missiles you're insane when you watch this footage i mean yes i agree i think those who are actually conducting this fire mission aren't probably being as uh, thorough with their uh, positioning of the guns in, in location or, or we call sort of laying the center of arc or recording of the guns in position correctly to put an accurate fire mission down on this checkpoint. And honestly, thank goodness there wasn't rounds landing on this checkpoint. Uh, you know, it's no one wants to watch the loss of life. Uh, but it's just, it's, I guess, one of those close calls where you're like, wow, this is this is insane Like that rock artillery is, is this capable of doing that much damage at any one time. I'm sure that's not news to anyone. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory information. But when you actually see it on footage like this uh, and how much, you know, aerial denial it can do, or area denial it can do, it's, it's really, really impressive. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I just want to remind everyone I'm not a subject matter expert in artillery. I'm just uh, kind of giving you a little feedback as to, you know, what the grad is capable of. And, and this footage really just gives you an understanding of the, the sort of capabilities. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please leave me a like and a comment. I'd really like to hear your opinion on this. And if you did also enjoy the video, check out the description box below for my... Uh, other links and social media, etc. If you want to be notified of any upcoming content, please click on the little bell by the subscribe button. And I would like to thank everyone who has been financially supporting my channel, either via Patreon, PayPal, or my membership. It really does mean a lot to me. Also, I'm going to be working on trying to get my uh, PO box stuff opened. I've got a big pile of stuff to go through. So I'm going to do a live stream at some point in the near future to open that up for all for you as well. So if you want to send me anything, check my PO box below as well. Thanks so much for joining me. Catch you on the next one. All the best. Bye-bye.